to New Day, everybody. Donald Watts blazed a basketball trail through high school and college, leading the UW to two consecutive NCAA tournaments, including a trip to the Sweet 16. The future looked very bright for Donald, and his NBA dreams were in sight when he was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome. Now, he and his father, Supersonics legend Slick Watts, help young players physically and mentally prepare to reach the next level. Here to share his story, please welcome back to New Day, Donald Watts. It's good to see you. Hey! Uh, so tell me about growing up with your dad. He's a character. When you two have been here together, it's just like it's like a show. Yeah, well, I was just going <laughs> to say it's great to be here without him <laughs> today. Uh, no, nah, I mean, growing up with him, it, it, was, it was a tremendous blessing. Uh, he's, you know, a lot of people, they come up to me in the street like, oh, your dad, he's a great guy, you know, this, this, and this. And, and you know, when you get home with him, for the most part, he's that same guy. He's that dude. For the most part. For the most part. <laughs> and he would appreciate you saying that because he likes to be real about these things as well. So did he have a huge influence on your basketball career? Do you? I mean, did, did you feel like you were pressed to play basketball or it was just I kind mean, of in the air? He had a huge influence, but he didn't press me at all. Um, he gave me a choice. He actually wanted me to play tennis. I think his, his feelings might have been hurt a little bit by his basketball career or something. <laughs> because he was trying to push me in other directions, mm -hmm. actually. And uh, he tried, oh, do this, go play individual sport, do this, do that. And I'm just like, man. And then I found basketball and I loved it. And he said, you love it? I said, yeah. He said, you want to be great at it? And I said, yeah. And then we spent a lot of time together doing it. You worked so hard and trained really hard. And you got to, to college. You're a big star at the UW. Uh, tell me about your regimen then and what your plans were prior to diagnosis. Well, so the, the, the interesting thing is, is that, and this is, you know, why I'm finally like re ready to share this story is when we went to the Sweet 16 and when we went to the NCAA tournament, I was dealing with chronic fatigue syndrome. I didn't know exactly that's what it was at mm -hmm. the time, but actually my junior year, I called my mother in Alabama and told her I was done. Like I was going to quit. And she convinced me to make it just to December. Right. Uh, over our break, and she was going to get me to a naturopath, and we were going to try to figure some things out. And what we, were you feeling? What were you telling her? Oh, um, I mean, I'd I be cramping up before games. Uh, just as an example, I tested at the University of Washington as a junior in high school. I had a 37-inch vertical leap. My sophomore year, I had a 27. So I lost that much power wow. in my legs. And then what would happen is during the off season, when I got to train, when I felt good, I would be good. But then once we hit that everyday grind, day mm -hmm. in and day out, I couldn't sustain it. Um, the first time I ever quit doing anything physical was my freshman year at the UW. And it wasn't, I wasn't doing anything I hadn't done before. Right. That yeah. must have and been so had, scary. Oh, no idea what was going on. And I, it, w it was such a dark time, um, going to doctors, going, you just wanted an answer and there wasn't a lot, there was, really no answers on autoimmune, chronic fatigue right. stuff. And we didn't and the, know much the, about it. Much so about it, it all. People wonder, is this it's a real thing? Head. What's going on? Yeah. It is not in your head. Yeah. It's in your legs, yes. in your body, in yes. your joints. Um, were you, did you feel pain or fatigue or? I felt pain, uh, but being an athlete and, and pushing myself the way I had at a younger age, you're used to pain. So that's not what I complained right. about. I complained about fatigue. I complained <laughs> about not having my power. I was I, I could deal with pain, right. you know, um, and, and that's the interesting thing about dealing with the with the doctors and stuff like that. Whatever I complained about is exactly what they would look at. And they weren't looking at the whole mm -hmm. picture. Now we've advanced a lot and, and people look at the whole picture. Like if my legs were cramping up, then they wanted to do a muscle biopsy on my yeah. legs. Right. If 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 I complained about, you know, I mean, I would eat and my jaw would cramp up. Like that's how, that's yeah, how fatigued I would get. How did um, you get through that period of time, especially that year, with all of this? Because this has got to play tricks with your mind. Oh yeah, definitely. And, um, and 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 this is why I do what I do from the basketball standpoint, why I teach the way I teach, because the way that I was taught basketball saved my life during that time. Just Tell me. do the best you can uh, every day. Like review what you you know how you do and just that process of just mm -hmm. doing the best that you can with what you have, and then evaluating how you did and then trying to be better the next day. Trying to be better. There were some really 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 dark moments that my mentors, you know, guys like Fred Brown, uh, obviously my father, um, you know, Gary Payton, like these guys that I had the opportunity to spend time with. They don't know what they were giving me, but they saved my life. Right, the process that they put me through save my life when I, when I had, you know, you have this dream, you have this goal, right. and then you have no idea, no reason why, 
you're on a trajectory and now you're going backwards. And, and the harder you work, the further backwards you go. Oh man, that, you know, the, the mental and emotional aspect of that really hits me because you, you know, exactly, you're yeah. on this trajectory and you have these expectations. So when you finally got a diagnosis, what was that like and how did you process it? Well, even when I got a diagnosis, it wasn't really clear that there was a path or what to do. Um, and, and ultimately I am where I am right now, I'm 40 years old. Uh, my weight is the same as it was when I was playing in college. You know, I've, I've really worked hard this last five or six years uh, being gluten and sugar free mm -hmm. um, and, and, and doing things to take care of myself on a daily basis that are really what I've learned and studied from, from a, a variety of people. Acupuncture, mm -hmm. I you know, deal with ac do, uh, acupuncture. I have a cranial sacral guy, uh, Dr. Bruce Davis that I go to. Uh, and so there's really a team of people that they don't even know they're a team. <laughs> <laughs> but they're on your team. <laughs> but they're on my team that and are responsible you've, you've for my health and well-being. you've made good ex exploration of the different options because mm -hmm. as much as we know now about immune system problems, it's still a mystery. Yeah. It's still uncertain what causes these things. Is it a virus? Is it connected to other stuff? You know, what do we do? Um, what, what did you find was the most effective when you sort of looked beyond just the initial doctor's appointments? Uh, the, the most effective thing is my diet, changing my diet, getting rid of sugar. Getting rid, that was the first thing we did when I met with Dr. Hale in Mobile that allowed us to go to the Sweet 16 as a university was I got rid of sugar um, uh, and, and wheat basically. Mm -hmm. But then even then it was challenging because like I just want to do what other people do. Right. You know, I just want to like I want to answer. Like I want to peel. I want you know I like fix you, it. I want to fix it, right? So I had ups and downs because of those things. And when I first got off of the gluten and sugar for real, like you feel like you're dying. <laughs> like <laughs> like literally it's there's a huge it's, adjustment. It's, oh, a huge adjustment. And you feel much, much worse. How'd well, you get the, through that the, to get to the other side? Well the first time then when I did it, I was kinda off and on with it. I would I would say like, oh man, I I need a burger and go get that burger mm -hmm. and then be down for a couple feeling. days. <laughs> <laughs> but um, now in my life, later in my life, when I've really made that commitment, it's because there's better information. And I know mm -hmm. that I'm supposed to feel bad before I feel good, but then I also know that there's things, digestive enzymes and different things that I can take whenever I'm going through that process to help lift me back up, you know. So why are you willing to talk about this in depth now? Um, I, I, it's a really private experience yeah. when you're going through it. Um, when you're an athlete and, and you grow up in my father's household, you become private because everybody knows you, everybody sees you, everybody feels opinionated on things. Mm -hmm. So that's made me that way as a person. But I go out and I do motivational speaking and I go out and I, and I talk to people and I'll just touch on it. And every time I do that, there's four or five people who come up to me and say, hey, I'm dealing with the same thing. And what you shared was very, you know, inspirational for me. So the reason now that I'm able to come and talk about it um, is because I kn I've realized I'm not alone in the struggle and I realize I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. And uh, my story can be helpful to other people. And I also feel like people can be helpful to, to me. So there's a community of people that deal with the things that I deal with that I want to connect with, identify with, and, and do everything that I can to help ease some of their struggles right. because it's, a, it's an everyday process. And exchange ideas. Yeah. Um, and you and your dad, I love following you on, on Twitter right. because there's, it, there's something just really very humble and, and grounded about the way you guys approach things that basketball or physical challenges illness life um, everything's about being a good person yeah. everything's about taking responsibility and trying to do your best so what is the philosophy behind what you and your dad do for work now well you know it's, it's game changers for life right and a lot of our youth sports is a, you know people they want to win they want to this and what we want to do is we want to say participate in whatever you do put your heart into it to give yourself a better life and the people around you a better life now not because you make it to the NBA or not because you get a scholarship but because it makes it help you helps make you a healthier person yeah. because it puts a network of positive people around you and put your heart into it and then kind of see what happens. I mean, my dad used to pick cotton in Rolling Fork, Mississippi. I don't have to do that. Right. Never have. One half a day I tried to pick okra mm. to make some money and I realized that was not for me. <laughs> Just so you know, everybody in our family had to pick cotton in the summer when we turned 15 <laughs> right. at my Uncle Junior's farm in Oklahoma. 
and it made everybody go to college. Yeah, it, <laughs> made, it, made, it, made, yeah. it makes you figure out something else no, to do. No, thank you. Sure. That's not for me. For sure. So, so how do you stay active now, and, and how is your health at this point? Oh, my, my health is really, really, really good. You yeah. know, like you I'm, look I'm good. proud. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, we work hard at it. I, I hang out with the kids. You know, I, I, I have kids that I train from kindergarten all the way through that are playing professional. I have mm -hmm. a you know, a couple players that play on the, um, one plays on the Argentina national team. I got guys in the G League. Um, I have a, you know, kid plays on the Taiwan national team. So That's we're all great. over the world and they keep me active, keep me fit. And I, the, you know, the, the biggest thing is I got a son. Uh, I have two teenagers. I have a son who's 13 years old who thinks he's going to dunk on me soon. <laughs> and I'm trying to make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> And so it just rolls from <laughs> yeah, generation yeah, to generation. Yeah. So is there anything you can say? I, I mean, I have a good friend who deals with you know, some really serious immune mm -hmm. issues, and, and this is a thing that oftentimes isolates people. Yeah. So is there a message you would want to give to people today? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the message is to, to, like, really do the best that you can with what you have today. This is how I live, right? Do the best you can with what you have today. And a lot of us are A-type personalities, so we'll overdo it, right? But make sure you have something left for tomorrow. Right. You know, and, and, and do things like develop knowledge of what builds your system, builds your immune system. Stay away from the things that don't. And I say that, but I like Tito's vodka. Sure. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but I have to it's make sure. It's never easy. I have to make sure I do it in moderation. I have to make sure that, you know, this holiday season is here. You know, I'm going to have a drink with the family. I don't deprive myself of things. Right. I do sugar and gluten because that really knocks me so out. So no pie tomorrow? Yeah, no pie. Actually, I'm, I'm going to make a pie. I'm going to make a sweet potato pie mm -hmm. with uh, my alternative sugar of choice, which is xylitol. Excellent. Yeah. I like that idea. Yeah. That's See, that's way better than no pie. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's just my kind of pie. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm so glad that you talked about this, and I know there are a lot of people out there who need the encouragement. and. Um, We'll continue to explore some of these alternative areas because it's very important. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Please visit our website for more information about Watts basketball, including a list of upcoming camps for kids and teenagers. We've also linked additional resources about chronic fatigue syndrome. Be well, everybody. Still ahead. Enjoying the holidays without derailing your good habits. We'll be right back.